Welcome back to The Sandbox, boys and girls, and everybody in between. Thank you so much for coming back to play with me once again. All right, so we're going to continue here with our, our new best friend, Justin Hope, who is just trying to get through school, just trying to get through school, but um, he's carrying around a couple secrets. One, he's gay, and two, he's in love with his best friend. And three, he is a uh, songwriter. Well, I guess that's not, it's not a secret that he's a songwriter, but what the lyrics that he writes is the secret because he reveals himself in his, uh, in his songbook, like in his art, which any good artist does, right? You, you reveal yourself. Um, you write what you know. Um, but standing in his way, um, he's got uh, Tiffany Swindleback, his arch nemesis, who we have actually haven't met yet. I don't know what her deal is. And then there's this kid, Theo, who is kind of an ass. But I don't know. There seems to be maybe room for improvement on the relationship between Theo and Justin. We'll see how that pans out. Um, he does have friends that uh, like him and, and support him. His best friend, Ethan, apparently at some point like had sex with Mikhail from Straight and then stole his shirt. And he's just walking around in Mikhail's shirt like nobody's going to notice. I don't I don't know that that's true. I don't <laughs> know that there's any connection uh, between Ethan and Mikhail, but maybe this is all set in the same universe as Straight. I don't know. The game is still very, very early in development, so I am sure there will be surprises plenty uh, to come in the future. All right. So... Um, here he is. He's home after school. He uh, had some kind of an attack, like his head started throbbing, and um, he's feeling more hopeful now. Let's see what happens next. Hope that I might not have to figure out who I am alone. Well, yeah, don't we all hope for that? It took me a while to type that out, but I figured going as blunt as possible was the best way to get answers. He's he's texting this, the person uh, who found his songbook and read it, and then left a little anonymous note inside the songbook saying, "Hey, I think we're I think we're alike. I think we're similar." I can't believe I'm doing this, but dude, you got my attention. What is it you think we have in common? River. River? Who's River? I deleted the message about ten times, rewriting and deleting it again and again. My original thought was to ask why they thought it was appropriate to invade my privacy. Dude. But then I figured that it might be too harsh and you know, a little counterproductive. He did say that he'd mistaken it for a library book. That sounds like an excuse to me, frankly. Assuming they are a he, well, hoping they are. Hours seemed to fly by as I waited for a reply. I sat at my desk, <laughs> absently clicking through my YouTube subscriptions, clearly watching the Brian Sandbox uh, recording of uh, Straight. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I don't see my logo. That doesn't look like my logo right there, but I'll, I'm going to assume, I'm going to pretend, maybe that's a better word. I'm going to pretend this is my recording of uh, my straight playthrough. Tips on keeping calm, slow breathing, close eyes, count to ten, think of happy place. Has a little trouble keeping calm. To gazing out at the forest that stood at the border of my backyard. I finally settled on sprawling out on my bed and staring up at the ceiling, running the day's events through my head like an old silent movie. Before I knew it, Mom had come home from work and was preparing dinner. Even though our meals as of late have been, well, gross, I was hoping for one of her famous hamburgers. They always cheer me up. I mean, not that I was sad, though. I mean, at least not anymore. More anxious, if anything. Perhaps even excited, because I've never spoken to anyone like me before. 
The entire town was a heteronormative haven ripped straight from the 70s with modern influences only just starting to creep their way in. Even though I had my friends, I still felt totally alone in a town that was so close-knit. You gotta have people that that you vibe with. You gotta have people that you're in synchronicity with. That's important in life. And yeah, when you're when you're the outsider, when you're the person that is unlike anybody anybody else in town. Of course, he's not. He's we know this, right? He's not the only gay person in town. Um, there are others, but they're it, they all stay hidden, right? Because they don't want to get their faces beaten in. So it's tough. Um, and, and I'm sure he feels alone, but it's important to have people that you can feel in sync with. It makes life easier, it makes life better. Suddenly, my phone vibrates and my heart skips a beat, like literal melodic beat. Cardiac arrest all up in this, I was either going to die from relief or terror. I was about ready to grab the defibrillator, but then noticed Ethan's name pop up on the screen. Oh, don't be sad that it's Ethan. It was just a message on Snapchat. Oh, maybe he sent you a dick. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, no, face pic. I frown at his adorable smirk, recognizing the coffee house and mentally kicking myself for missing out. Jeremy and Rachel were no doubt hiding on the other side of the camera. They never did like having their picture taken. In my hurry to get home, I completely blew off my friends with a bad excuse. This year has already been troubling, and if they hadn't noticed my flaky behavior before, then they for sure are talking about it now. Behavior with a U in that very cute UK way. But the game is set in the United States, so when Justin thinks the word behavior, it would not have a U in it. I'm just saying. It's no surprise they're worried about me, but I'm definitely not ready to tell them what's going on. I just want my life to be ordinary for a little longer. I type some shit about feeling queasy from lunch and take a picture pretending to be ill. Think I've got food poisoning from lunch, feel like shit. I'm okay though, enjoy your coffee. Oh, I didn't even read, uh, let's go back to, and read uh, Ethan's. Hope you're feeling better, man. Aw, isn't he, isn't he nice? He's sweet. You've not been yourself lately. Always here if you need to talk. Wow, bro. I mean, fall in love with your best friend. That's, that's, the, that's the best you can hope for. Hitting send, I hope that would be enough to get Ethan off my case. But that fire dwindled as my phone vibrated again not ten seconds later. I reluctantly unlocked my phone again to reveal a heart-stopping surprise. He replied. He actually replied. Okay, so here I have a bit of a conundrum. <laughs> so I don't know who is on the other end of the phone here texting. At some point, it may be revealed to be a character that we already know. It could be Ethan. I don't know. Could be Jeremy. Could be Theo. Could be Tiffany Swindleback. We don't know. Um, and so, what voice do I use in in reading their text messages? So for now, I'm going to go with a voice that I don't think any other character will actually use. Uh, we're going to try to go Scottish just <laughs> just to uh, differentiate the uh, voices. River, eh? Not using our real names then? Ah, that's smart. Keeping anonymous is probably the best for now. As for what we have in common, I think you already know. Otherwise you wouldn't have texted me, would you? Guess I'm just tired of dealing with this alone. It'd be nice to have someone to finally talk about it with. TBD. I don't know what TBD means. I need to take a second to digest what is actually happening right now. Someone is reaching out to me for the help that I have been craving for years. Perhaps, maybe, we could help each other. If we are keeping things anonymous, then there's no harm in it, right? He doesn't know who I am. I don't know who he is. Nobody actually texts anymore. It's all Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook, if you're ancient. 
The only people that have my numbers are family and close friends. Hell, I don't actually know whether all my friends have my digits or not. I smile in thought. Something inside of me just wants to open up to this guy. Because it's safe. He's anonymous. Never, never have I spoken about this stuff. I've only written it down as songs that I don't actually sing. It's just a way to get rid of what's plaguing my mind. But deep down, I do wish that I had the courage to sing my thoughts. Justin, dinner's ready! A sigh of relief escapes my lips at the thought of food. I didn't actually have anything to eat for lunch. Too lost in my head to think about eating and running all over the school to find your book. This is probably why I forgot my book in the first place. Too tormented to take in what was happening around me. I quickly type out a response, reading over it a couple of times before hitting send. Hmm, TBD? Can't think of a name? Stick around long enough and I might be able to come up with one. I agree. Sometimes it's hard to breathe with all the lies weighing on my chest. My friends have no idea who I am. Hiding a part of myself from the people that I love feels wrong. But I can't risk them knowing. Does that make me a bad person? It does not make you a bad person. We've all done this. The people listening to this video probably, have, in a greater, much greater percentage, have done it in, in their lives. And it's okay. It's scary being different. It's scary the thought that you might alienate yourself from your friends or your family. Uh, particularly when you're young because you depend upon your family to take care of you. It does not make you a bad person. Walking into the kitchen, I barely notice my mom across the room as I stare down at my phone, hoping for a reply. These people live on an amazing piece of land. Look at look at the look at their backyard. It's they have a national forest in their backyard. I sit down at the table and groan internally at the slush before me. The new trend sweeping Spring Creek is the keto diet, and naturally, my mom has been the main pioneer for the craze. Before me is a brown soup of indistinguishable vegetables. It's safe to say that my meals as of late have been less than fulfilling, likely contributing to my tiredness. My displeasure for the meal must have been obvious because my mom frowns as she sits down. That's never a good sign. You know, I am growing tired of this ungrateful attitude. Jesus, Mom, back the f*** up. Just because you're all about keto doesn't mean that I have to be all about keto. Why can't I eat what I want to eat? And frankly, you feeling gratitude is not in our contract anywhere. Our contract is you take care of me until I'm old enough to take care of myself. It's not that, Mom. It's just, I've had a long day and I was hoping for one of your famous burgers. Justin, you know we can't eat meat with the current diet. You, keto is completely about protein. What, what do you mean you can't eat meat? I thought this... See, Justin knows. I thought it was keto. Meats are some of the staples for the diet. Couldn't we have keto burgers or something? Keto? No, no, that was last week. The girls are now going vegan. Vegan? Yes, it's basically cutting out all meat and fish and foods that come or are derived from animals. I know what vegan is, Mom. I'm just, I'm surprised you would agree to do it and force it on me. Well, you know me. I'm all about the environment and saving the grizzly bears. She looks sad, doesn't she? She was, uh, maybe it's because her eyes are always downcast. She looks kind of sad. Like her life is not very fulfilling for her either. Certainly not fulfilling for Justin. Um, I think it's the polar bears that are endangered. What about your wine? Hey, Justin, you just you need to check that attitude. Wine is awesome. You need to step back. What about it? You haven't been sneaking some, have you? 
I bought that for the girls this weekend. We're going to the spa. No, Mom, I haven't been dipping into your wine, but do you buy vegan wine? Regular wine isn't vegan? No, it isn't. I didn't know that. It comes from grapes, right? What's not vegan about wine? I'm going to have to look this up now. Neither are the avocados in the fridge, the white sugar for your decaf coffee, or the shampoos in the bathroom. <sighs> this is harder than I thought. I remained silent, not sure if my response would get the reaction that I'd hoped for. So, Justin, honey, how was school today? Um, all right. Same as usual, I guess. I lie, shrugging my shoulders, hoping that she wouldn't press further. How about you? Well, could be better. We've been swamped with all the new orders. My thoughts drift elsewhere as my phone vibrates under the table. <gasps> it could be him. It's TBD. I half listen to my mom rambling on about Karen, her cellmate and candle fanatic. Her cellmate? Was mom in prison? Brought in new wax melts only available from one store in the whole state. Some women prefer cats. Others, makeup. Not Karen. All Karen wants in life is to collect her candles and parade them to the world as if they were her children. Ugh, my head is so scattered today. What the f*** should I do? Check my phone, listen to my mom. <laughs> Throwing my plate of so-called food across the room is not an option? Oh, that's too bad. Well, listen, I'm going to tell you something here. Um, there is nothing in this world more annoying and frankly more rude than sitting in front of someone carrying on a conversation on your phone. Be present, right? If you're with me, be with me. Be present. Pay attention. Listen to me. Talk to me. Give me your attention. If you want to talk on your phone, leave. Don't sit in front of me pretending to listen to me. That's just rude. So we're here. We're with mom. She's our mom. She, she may be crazy. Honestly, she seems like she is. Um, but she's my mom. And okay, we're going to, while we're here, we're not going to be rude. We're going to listen to mom and hope that uh, we can get away from her at some point, go back up to our bedroom, and then check our phone and reply to TBD. Justin, what's up with you lately? I'm trying to have a conversation with you. It's nothing, Mom. Uh, there's, there's nothing up with me. It's just a lot of work at school and I'm really tired because you keep changing my diet in these wild, wild swings. Can't I just have a f***ing hamburger? You've been saying that for months. Well, yeah, because you've been like this for my entire life. Can we have a serious conversation without you dodging my questions? Probably not. I'm a teenage boy. I have my secrets. I don't want to tell you everything. Mom, I'm not dodging anything. Lying has become second nature to me, so they just sort of blurt out of my mouth without much effort. But my mom can always sense when I'm not being totally honest. She is undoubtedly the hardest person to fool. You've been acting differently lately. I'm not sure if you're having trouble at school or if it's just normal, you know, teenage boy stuff. But if something is bothering you... Do you know I will never judge you? Honestly, Mom, I'm fine. Just get off my case. Her reaction is impulsive, but the disapproving nod of her head is exactly why I can't trust that she wouldn't judge me. See, that's the thing. Parents like to say, I won't judge you, but they have totally f***ing judge you, and you know it. You know it. It's just schoolwork. We have exams coming up, and, you know, it's a lot to remember. You remember what high school is like, don't you? Are your friends helping you study? I haven't seen them around here for quite some time. Now you're going to rag on my friends, Mom? Jesus. Let me live my life. To be honest, 
I miss the chatter. It's nice to come back from work to a full home. They are helping me, but, you know, we've been hanging out at Ethan's since he has, you know, more space. My mother's face casts a gloomy shadow at this, her bitter jealousy beginning to sneak through. The truth is, I can't confide in her about anything that makes me appear abnormal. She says she would understand, and maybe that's true, but her jealousy and anger for not having the life she so bitterly wanted would cloud any good intentions. Her parents were the last to see the small fortune left by great-grandpa Amias, and they squandered it on pointless vacations and out-of-date furnishing for the house that there was nothing left for us but this old house out here on this prime piece of real estate next to a national forest. Looks like a nice house to me, buddy, but okay. My father isn't in the picture anymore. He left when I was four, and uh, frankly, I don't remember much about him. There aren't any pictures in the house, and up until last year, I never really cared. So he's never seen his father? Wow. So, number one, the divorce was bitter. <laughs> More a essentially burned every picture of her ex-husband. And number two, uh, Justin's father could literally be anybody, and he would never know. Could be the milkman. Well, there are no milkmen. Could be the mailman, right? Could be the postman. And he would never know. But now that my body is going through these, uh, you know, changes, it'd be nice to know if I somehow inherited it from him. Wait a minute be nice to know if I inherited it from him. Like the size of your dick? Is that what you're talking about? Do I have my dad's dick? I don't know. Is that, I don't know, that's kind of a weird thing for him to say, or think internally. By the way, Blake loves backlighting. Look at that. It's like a, he's, Justin always has a halo wherever he goes. He's got a freaking halo in that hair of his. But contact seems so far out of reach that it's only briefly crossed my mind. Mom would lose her shit if she ever found out that I was trying to contact him. Oh, oh, there's another secret. He's trying to secretly contact his father. He destroyed the nuclear family that she desired, and her bitterness has prevented her from pursuing much else ever since. So she's stuck. She's stuck in time. She needs to see a therapist. We scrape by to appear put together but she knows deep down that the people of this town pity her, and the one thing she despises is pity. Man, what a f***ing life. I, I kind of feel really sorry for his mom. I mean, yeah, she's kind of a crappy mom, but what a terrible life. What an awful, awful life. I feel sorry for her. Concocting scheme after scheme to get rich quick. Oh, that's a whole other thing. But they all fail. She needs us to appear normal, to appear strong, so that her superficial friends won't pity her. My phone suddenly vibrates again, and a grin works its way across my face as I notice that the message is from TBD. At this point, I about lose my shit. It was a good job that whoever was on the other end of this phone couldn't see my physical reaction. Okay, River, here's your first hint. I don't have a favorite film, but I love the Marvel franchise. I'm a nerd, sorry. Tom Holland in the latest movies is fucking gorgeous. And I know the feeling, but you're not alone. I haven't told anyone either besides you. And we don't even know each other's identity, so it's safe. I f love Marvel, and honestly, the films and comics have helped me so much these past few months, more than anyone could understand. Thank you, Mary, Jesus, and Joseph, for this wonderful gift. If he was a DC fan, then that would have cut this adventure short. Hey, don't trash on DC, Blake. I'm a Batman guy from way, way back. If you're going to try and fool the world that Batman is a superhero, then go right ahead. But I know the truth. Blake is wrong on this. Justin is wrong on this. On another note, 
It was also a relief to know that he understands how it feels to be like this. But here's the thing. We don't know what he thinks he has in common with our friend Justin here. We're sort of assuming it's homosexuality, but we don't actually know that. We got to figure out what it is actually that they have in common first before we can sort of jump to this, you know, he's just like me kind of thing. The weight of a secret can be unbearable sometimes, and even though I don't know him, I have opened up more in the past hour than I have in years. I quickly message back, hiding my phone under the table so that my mom can't see. You do realize how risky that was, right? If you had said DC, I'd have blocked your ass and thrown my phone in the creek. All I can come up with at the moment is Spidey. Okay, but I'll keep thinking. I have to admit, it's nice to get a release after so long. I haven't had a release yet. It's nice to finally have someone to talk to. I finish my sludge soup in silence, my mother only sharing fleeting glances of disapproval for once. Once done, I head upstairs to my room, ignoring the daggers in the back of my head terrible mom. What a terrible mom. The mysterious TBD didn't reply for the rest of the evening. Oh, that's too bad. Even though I checked my phone every few minutes, it seemed like an eternity had passed, when in reality it was just a mere four hours before midnight finally struck. Though it was an early night for me, the wait midnight is an early night for you? Oh, sweetie. Wow. The weight on my chest wasn't heavy. I could breathe normally for a change, and my thoughts drifted seamlessly to a faceless boy that felt safe and familiar. Hoping my mother would go to bed soon, I head for a shower to kill some time. Oh yeah, here we go. Dropping my pajama bottoms, I step into the shower and let the warm water envelop my body. Yeah. He's fit, isn't he? The silky shampoo lathered into my scalp and ran down my neck into the crook of my back. Is he trimmed? You think that's trimmed, or is that just natural? I think he trims. I've never been overly confident in my body. Why the f*** not? Although, I wasn't exactly out of shape. Dude, What? I don't even know what you're talking about. You're f***ing hot. Your body is fantastic. Why wouldn't you be confident in it? I. That seems weirder to me, that you wouldn't be confident in it. It's what you do, yeah. Makes me feel like I'm falling. And when you move, yeah, I can feel my body calling. It might be bad, but I feel so good, and I want you right where we're stood. Because you've been looking at me all day, hoping that I would stay, and I just want to let you know. This ain't no fairy tale, but this love is forever, so we can take it slow. Wow. Justin gets deep in his song lyrics. There's no water. There's no water coming out of the shower. And his skin isn't wet. It's, I don't know, it's extra. For those of you who don't know, all of all of these assets, you got to buy them. Um, and some of them are expensive, like water and wet skin. The shower is my favorite place to sing. Favorite with a U, a cute U-K-U. Correction, it is the only place I sing. My mom's bedroom is on the other end of the house, and although the walls are paper thin... It feels like a totally different world in here. It's a place where my songs come to life. The ones I choose to sing, at least. As my thoughts linger on the words, they remind me of who I wrote them about. Ethan. Oh, it's hard being in love with your best friend when he's straight and you can't tell him. It's hard. Dude, I've been there. Ethan and his stupid, captivating smile. Yeah. I bet he smells good, too. Justin, just tell me. Just you and me, buddy. 
You love the way Ethan smells, don't you? Yeah, you do. I know it. I know you do. I have had a crush on him for years. At first, I thought it was just like a phase that I grow out of it and I'd stop feeling so awkward around him. But it's at times like this when my mind races and all I can think about is him. Mm-hmm. How it would feel for him to touch me. This is a nice effect, by the way. I like it. It's very nice. To kiss me. To feel him pressed against me with our bodies warm and wet. All right, I should get out. I don't want to make a mess in here. No, make a mess, Justin. Where? <laughs> Cleanup is so easy. The shower is where you want to make the mess. Go ahead. Buddy, come on. Oh, Turning off the hot water, I step out of the shower and dry myself quickly before the cool air gets a chance to attack my skin. Ah, oh, what a missed opportunity. I pull on a fresh pair of boxers and try to shake away any lingering thoughts of Ethan. Climbing up the steps to my attic bedroom, I'm thankful that there's a space that's just mine. As I get to the top, I notice my phone vibrating on the bedside table. <laughs> like a superhero, he leaps across the room, ripping it from the charge. I dive onto the bed and unlock the screen. There's several notification pings from Ethan clogging up my bar. What do you mean clogging up your bar? He's, he's your best friend and you're in love with him. Far from unusual, but it wasn't the name that I wanted to see. Oh... Maybe somebody's replacing Ethan in Justin's heart. 343? That, that's got to be AM, right? Because it was midnight just 10 minutes ago. I scroll until finally TBD popped up at the very bottom. Sorry for the late reply. I don't expect you to be awake. I kind of like Spidey, though. Also, it's nice to know that I've given you a release. Winky emoji. I could feel my cheeks burning a crimson red at the text. The heat rushing to more places than just my face. I adjust myself instinctively, not wanting to get myself worked up. No, get yourself worked up. Notice there's a space poster right up here. Remember that theme we, we recognized in the first episode? Lots of soaring and space moon things and space things. Uh, that's definitely a theme going on here. That winky face shouldn't have the power to send butterflies through my body. Such a simple, harmless flirt has sent my hormones into a frenzy. Could also be the sheer lack of sexual chemistry since, well, ever. Hey, no worries, man. Just finished up in the shower and feeling fresh. Love the feeling of warm water on my skin. So, Spidey. Flirting with a guy you hardly know. Brave move. Oof, the shower. Oh, it sounds hot. Who, me, flirting? I haven't a clue what you mean. Definitely not flirting. You know damn well what I mean. Did you just give me your number so you could flirt with me? No, not at all. Sorry, I don't want to give that impression. I've just never spoke to a guy like me before. I'm kind of nervous. This is totally new territory, and even though it's exciting, it's also really f***ing scary. Does that make sense? This is the first time a boy's flirted with me, and it feels totally different to when girls flirt. I really like it. Well, if that's the case, I'll keep flirting. I'm also totally trying not to eat my pillow right now, so I can stay up and talk to you. I need a f coffee with an extra shot of espresso and a suspicious amount of sugar. Yeah, that sounds hot. Eh, I'm not the biggest fan of coffee, to be honest. Dark hot chocolate, on the other hand. Oh, that gets me going. Put a little Bailey's in there. Bailey's Irish cream in hot chocolate. Oh, f it's heaven. 
heaven. Not a fan of coffee? I have never been so insulted in my life. Sing me a song of woe, river, and feed me grapes as an apology. I have never actually sung any of my songs for someone before. Kind of hard to bear your soul when you keep it locked away. Do you think yourself some Egyptian pharaoh, Spidey? The only person I feed is me, so yeah, good luck with that. Hopefully one day you'll sing for me. I know what it's like to hide a part of yourself. It's like you're on autopilot, just existing. Sometimes I feel like I'm in someone else's body. The things I say and do are from a person that died years ago. Suppose I'm just trying to hold on to what I think this town thinks is normal for as long as possible. P.S. Yes, I do think I'm royalty. Dude, you have described it perfectly. Though, I can't help but feel that I have heard that before. In a certain songbook. Belonging to me. I can't help but feel transparent here. You've seen my darkest fears, and yet I barely know anything about you. Well, what do you want to know? It's only fair for you to ask something, since I know so much about you already. Well, okay, I know you go to Spring Creek, so we've probably met without knowing it, or even share a class. Are Are you a senior like me? Well deduced, young Sherlock. Suppose finding your book in the library was a giveaway. Yes, I'm a senior, but I'm not going to say all my classes. I will say, though, I'm really not looking forward to physics tomorrow with Mr. Wells in the morning. Hmm, interesting. All right, thanks for sharing. And sorry if I'm keeping you up too late. I'll let you go to sleep now. Ah, you're all good, man. I've been wanting to catch up on some shows anyway. I am going to head off now, though. I'll hit you up in the morning. Thanks for taking a chance and messaging me. Good night, River. And just like that, I'm all alone again. The solitude, a breeding ground for my swirling emotions. But unlike the last few months, they weren't taking over. They weren't negative or self-destructive. I felt positive, hopeful, that I'd finally found someone to connect with on a higher level. Looking at the time, a curious thought crossed my mind. It was late, and most of the town would be asleep by now. Slipping into my joggers, I pull on my sneakers and creep out of the room quietly. Oh, what are we going to do? I slowly pressed past my mom's room, the light snores followed by rain patter from her night sounds app, signaling that she was fast asleep. I thought her room was at the other end of the house. Do you have to pass her room to get downstairs even though she's at the opposite end of the house? Okay. Uh, In my head, that doesn't make sense. I grab a can from the fridge and stuff it into my back pocket before quietly sneaking out the back door. The yard was bathed in moonlight, the small specks of granite in the stony path glistening beneath my feet. I take a second and breathe in the fresh air. My house might be a mismatched nightmare of centuries gone by, but I have always loved the views here. The edge of my garden meets the outskirts of Spring Creek Forest. Garden is another UK term. Uh, Yard would be the American term. I say that only because Blake told us that the story is set in America, and so I'm going to correct those UK-isms with Americanisms. It was a beautiful night, the stars burning bright above the canopy of trees. The best part of living in a valley is the picturesque view constantly framed with rolling hills and clear skies. The forest stretched for miles, a protective barrier around the flowing creek. My family were once guardians of this land, but it's now just a rural scape that will eventually be bought off by some greedy corporation. Walking further into the forest, I eventually arrive at my destination. A small nook by the creek known to nobody but me. This 
This is my special place. Sacred lands of untold secrets and demons. I've been coming here a lot lately. It's the only place I can safely learn how to control my emotions. Nobody will find me here. Nobody will stumble into my path and discover my secret. Taking out the soda from my pocket, I crack it open and perch myself on a mossy rock so I can look up at the sky. More stars, more, you know, looking towards the heavens kind of a kind of a thing, fitting in with the theme. So many times I have sat here and wished that I could be up there. Be amongst greater beings who don't judge, persecute, or reject. Even through the thick layer of clouds that had settled over the valley, I can see the faint interstellar glimmers. Stars burn brightest just before they go out. And that's a lot like hope. You feel so passionate about something, so driven, that when hope turns to disappointment, that spark is diminished altogether. I just... I hope that isn't the case here. I really hope that I can trust this guy with more than just my sexuality. There's more to me than who I'm attracted to that isn't what I'm afraid of. I'm still coming to terms with the fact that I'm gay, but I'll get there. The right time will come and and I'll finally be ready to tell the people that I love. My true secret is much darker and far more dangerous than who I prefer to go to bed with. Uh Uh-oh. What is his deep, dark secret? Finishing the soda, I toss the can and think back on my night. Hey, don't litter. What the hell, dude? Take care of the environment. Remembering why I came out here in the first place. I let my thoughts drift back to the faceless boy in my mind. Only, he wasn't faceless. I just, I couldn't put the pieces together yet. The positive emotions flowed through my body until finally I felt my mind and fingertips pulsing with energy. Uh Uh-oh. What is, oh, is he a wizard? Is he magical? I've been trying for so long to control this through hatred, to suppress how I truly feel so I don't have an accidental outburst. But maybe, oh, look at that, he is magical. Maybe the key to control is to accept how I feel. To focus on the good and use that as a driving force. Staring at the can on the floor, I raise my hand slowly. The thought, the dream of acceptance and hope flooding my mind, granting me the power of control I never had before. My eyes follow the can as it begins to rise from the ground, floating several feet in the air as if being carried by an invisible force. This, this is my dark secret, my demon in the closet. I am not like anybody else. But maybe I finally found someone willing to accept me, all of me. I am just in hope. Playtime's over for now. What a good episode. So not only is he gay, secret number one, not only is he in love with his best friend, secret number two, he's also like a magician. He's Harry Potter. Or some, I don't know, some shit. He's got some ability, some supernatural ability. Yeah, so no wonder he's been freaking out about people finding out about who he really is. And, okay, let's be honest. The chances that Spidey, his his texting friend, is also supernatural? Uh, Probably pretty low. He might be gay. I mean, he did say... After reading Justin's songbook, in which he confesses his love for his best friend, I'm just like you. So I think the chances that Spidey is gay are probably pretty high. The chances that he's also has this supernatural ability, I don't know about that. But 
Okay, we'll, I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay, thanks so much for stopping by, for joining me in the sandbox. We'll see you next time.